Morning. Welcome to the second session of the Smart EU Participatory Workshops. This is part of the Social Media Resilience Toolbox project. We've got this website with lots more information, which is smart-toolkit.eu. Today we're going to be looking at clickbait. Yesterday it was an introduction to fake news and disinformation. And your task was to share with us some examples of fake news. So participants in the Zoom shared a couple of things. We found it was quite difficult to find. Because if you search for fake news, all you get is um, rebuttals of fake news and um, fact checkers explaining why things were fake. So we managed to find a video of um, people claiming to have become magnetic since having the COVID vaccine. Um, we've had a bit of clickbait here. And there was this lovely bit of propaganda in the Mind of the Media website. From Miss Marvel. Okay, so let's see if I can share this. Hopefully, you have a screen and I have a screen that I need to see. So as long as that's all right. Okay, so clickbait in social media. So what is clickbait? It's something that's, it's a headline, but it's a sensationalized headline or text that's usually on the internet and it's designed to get you to click it. So. What, however it's written, however it's designed, is meant to get you to click it, to find out what's going on, to find out more. Um, so it's provocative, it's sensationalistic, it's a publishing tactic, and it's there to increase interaction, um, to increase web page views, and therefore to increase the amount of money that whoever's written the headline will get from advertising revenue. Okay, so here's some examples of clickbait. We're looking at the 10 reasons why these are the best, 20 reasons why this celebrity loves these type of headphones, um, 10 things you need to do before leaving the house. Um, this is why, yeah, and this is how. There's also things like you can now, um, the last face wipe you will ever need, um, the last toilet roll you will ever need, the last iron you will ever need, and then you won't believe or why you should do this and not this or why you should stop this and do that instead. And they leave you, they leave you hanging, it leaves you you don't quite know what's going on, but you want to find out. So they're often sensationalist, misleading, and they're there to grab your attention, to grab you's attention and to make clicks. They're either extremely positive or extremely negative. So there's never anything middle, you don't click on a middle of the road headline, do you? It's got to be like at the worst case scenario or the best case scenario. So they're all very polarized. Um, so there's a study into this, which we'll look at later. And here it is. So why are we getting these headlines on social media and not in newspapers? More and more people are changing the way they consume the news. So we've replaced traditional physical papers or replacing traditional physical newspapers with magazines. And instead we're using virtual versions, online versions, blogs, or now even just, just what comes up in 
your Twitter or Facebook or whatever social media you use, just what comes up naturally in the scroll because you've subscribed to it that way without even actually going and searching out the news. So online news can be characterized by two key features. We've got interactivity. So people, can tend, people tend to consume the news that they're interested in. And then immediacy. It's there straight away. And you get it as soon as it's happened. As soon as you hear about something, you can Google it and you generally find some information. So people um, expect to be informed about the latest news with no delay. And these characteristics, this has changed the way the news is being produced and distributed. So the news cycle, so the time lag between when a news organization, sorry, the time lag between when a news organization becomes aware of an issue and publishes it. So that gap in time, that's called the news cycle, has been drastically shortened recently because things have to be published in straight away is immediate news on demand. And then there's interactivity, which is some people only want to read what they're interested in and they will ignore everything else and things become polarized and you create your little filter bubbles. So that's why the online news industry is now really competitive. So there are many more online news sites and unlike traditional newspapers, the online sites don't have physical restriction on the amount of information they can put in. So you, know, you can only fit a certain amount of stories into a newspaper. You can only have one headline story, one head front page story. On the internet, there's no front page. So there's no physical restriction on the amount of information they can publish, so they can publish more. And if people are only willing to spend a limited time consuming the news, it's really critical that the news sites have effective strategies to capture attention and attract your clicks. So headlines have changed. So now the purpose of a headline is to draw your attention quickly and briefly to the story. So potentially headlines can determine how many people read the news. There's increasing competition in the online world. It's not surprising to see headlines become more aggressive, more exaggerated and more misleading. More importantly, headlines are not only the first impression of news articles, Recent efforts suggest that headlines can even drive the way users perceive the rest of the content associated to them by affecting the way people remember it. So if you've got a really positive headline, then you're just going to assume that it's a positive story. If you've got a really negative headline, you're going to assume that it's a negative story and not dissociate the headline from the content. So there was a study done looking at how the headlines did give a first impression of what article was going to follow and they go beyond just attracting users to the news, they get actually changing your perception. Psychologists have known for a long time, first impressions matter. Headlines give the first impression of news articles and they can drive how users perceive their content. By drawing attention to certain details or facts, a headline can affect which existing knowledge is activated in the brain. By its choice of phrasing, a headline can influence your mindset so that readers later recall details that coincide with what they were expecting, leading individuals to perceive the same content differently according to the headline. Now, this is something that was researched in the 70s, so we've known this for a long, long time. This is not a new phenomenon. Well, recently, researchers have conducted an experiment in which factual or opinion news were presented to the participants, but with different headlines. And the authors concluded that the misleading headlines affected the reader's memory, inferential reasoning, and behavioral intentions. So the argument is that these effects arise not only because the headlines can strain the information from being processed, bias the readers towards interpreting the information in a specific way, but also because 
we, we as readers struggle to update your memory to correct the initial misconception. So the first thing we see and the first thing we think about something is the thing that's going to stick. And when we think back to it in the future, we'll still remember that first thing. We'll still remember that headline and we're not going to, like, we're not going to go back and edit our memory to change it once we've learned something is different. So even though we've read something, we know something was different, the bit we remember is that initial headline, that initial um, first impression. So this really highlights the importance of a headline. It goes way beyond attracting you to read the news and way beyond just attracting you to click. It changes your whole perception or attitude towards the content. So this motivated another study dedicated just on looking at those headlines. So this study, and I will share links later, and I'm not forecasting, I'll share links in the chat so that you can see for yourselves. Um, so this analysis has done of 69,907 online news headlines. And then the most popular articles in BBC and the most popular articles on Daily Mail were the extreme negative and the extreme positives. So the study says that strongly negative and strongly positive news is more attractive to internet users. We don't tend to interact with the middle of the road, less sensationalist, less extreme stories. So the study focused primarily on the headlines and they presented a thorough characterization of online news articles based on a data set of over 69, nearly, nearly 70,000 news produced by the four major global media corporations. So they looked at the New York Times, BBC, Reuters and Daily Mail. And they gathered those headlines during eight consecutive months in 2014, so it's a few years old again. All the four news sources had the same trend. Negative news headlines are the majority. So if it's negative, we're more likely to click on it, we're more likely to want to read it. Followed by neutral and positive ones. Particularly for Daily Mail, the amount of negative news headlines, so 65% of the Daily Mail news headlines were deemed to be negative. It's extremely high in neutral and positive ones. So a study showed that the majority of the news produced had negative headlines, and the amount of negative news produced is generally consistent over time. It also showed that extremely negative and positive headlines attract more popularity, while neutral headlines tend to be less attractive. Finally, the analysis about the user's comments on the news show the comments tend to be negative independently of the news is positive, negative or neutral. Oh, that's cool. So we are more likely to comment if we've got something bad to say and we're more likely to click if something is bad. So as authors looked into the sentiment scores of news headlines across different categories, they analysed the sentiment for all news headlines and compared the categories that were present in all four online news as business and money, health, science and technology, sport and world. The results depicted on the slide show that different categories have different distributions of sentiment scores. So health and world are predominantly negative for all four news sources. World is the most popular category in the news sources and it concentrates most of the produced news and is one of the most negative categories. So the red bars on this graph are the negative bars. So these are where the headlines are negative and the blue ones are positive. Wow. So there was a BuzzSumo survey which looked at 100 million headlines published between 1st of March 2017 and 10th of May 2017. And this research looked at the most shared headlines on Facebook and Twitter, which tend to be dominated by major publishers and consumer content. But it brought conclusions on the following topics. Headline phrases, um, what drives most engagement, 
the worst performing headline phrases, the most effective phrases, the things that start and end the headlines. So we're looking at the structure of the sentences, um, the words that are used that get most likely to be clicked and most likely to be shared. And then it looked at the worst performing headline phrases, um, most effective, the optimum number of words in a headline, the most impactful numbers to use, the most engaging things in Twitter, and then the difference between headlines. Okay, let's have a look at this. So we're just going to look, because we haven't got hours to go through them all, we're just going to look at the two most engaging headline phrases on Facebook and Twitter. So the top headline phrase by a massive amount here are the words, will make you. So the results are <clears throat> the three word phrases or trigrams that gain the most Facebook engagements. So anything that made people like, share, comment, and the phrase will make you has more than twice the number of Facebook engagements as the second most popular, which is this is why. One of the interesting things is that it's a linking phrase. It doesn't start the headline. It's not the end of the headline. It just makes explicit a linkage between the content and the potential impact on the reader. This headline format sets out why the reader should care about the content. Will make you. It promises that the content will have a direct impact on us, the reader. It gives an emotional reaction. It's clear, it's to the point, it's elegant, and it's effective. It's effective. So typical examples would be 24 pictures that will make you feel better about the world. Um, what this airline did for its passengers will make you tear up. Uh, six harsh truths that will make you a better person. Uh, who wore it better? Pictures that will make you laugh out loud and 13 travel tips that will make you feel smart. See, they're so well hidden, you wouldn't even realize you've read it. Wow, emotional phrases consistently effective on Facebook, measured by the number of interactions. So things like tears of joy, make you cry, give you goosebumps, is too cute, shocked to see, melt your heart, we can't stop laughing. There's three little words and they provoke as an emotional response. So many of the top performing posts with emotional headlines also have an image or video content, although there are also stories too. Headline phrases that provoke curiosity and a sense of voyeurism also gain a high level of engagement on Facebook. For example, what happened next? Talking about it. Uh, Twitter reacts to, like, even on Facebook, I love reading those like um, Twitter conversations where there's lots of comments and they're all really funny and then you make a Facebook post and it's Twitter reacts to, um, are freaking out, top 10 songs. The readers are often curious about what's being talked about by people what the top items are on the leak table, what's been said by people on Twitter about a topic or event. This type of content appeals to a reader's sense of curiosity and voyeurism. And, um, yeah, I know in blog writing, quite often the posts that you write, which is like top 10 tips for, they get much more interaction than anything else. Humans, eh? So Twitter's slightly different. The headline phrases that get the most engagement on Twitter are quite distinct from the ones that get the high engagement on Facebook. Uh, the main exception, the powerful will make you phrase, which is massive on Facebook, is just is the fourth most shared phrase on Twitter. Uh, what's particularly interesting is the lack of emotional phrases in the top headlines on Twitter is very different to Facebook. 
the top Twitter phrases have a focus on newness, such as for the first time and is the new, the top trigram. So we're looking at these three words that seem to make the difference. We call them trigram. So the top trigram shared on Twitter focus on explanations and analysis, like the truth about, the rise of, things to know, this is what and what we know. I'm just going to click back onto the Facebook one for comparison. So we'll make you is uh, those 8,961 engagements during the time of study and on Twitter. We'll make you is only down to uh, 115 shares. Very different, very different uses of the two platforms. So here are a few that I managed to find so the more recent examples of clickbait titles. There's some from the news here, and I think we've got some foreign news titles as well. So missed it. Here's how to watch it. So here's how to um The word, what did we learn? 12 things we learned. So they're there, they're designed to appeal to us directly, and they're, appeal, they're designed to make us want to click. And there's emotive language in them. You, know, you won't believe the results. 20 celebrities who have done something. Um, the must see, changing the way you listen. 15 reasons why you should, or why you should never. Uh, a number of stunning images of things that you had no idea existed. So it's bringing you into it and it's making a direct relationship between you and the content. Okay, on to today's exercise. So, yesterday we were looking for just general examples of fake news and you can still carry on adding to that. Today we're gonna to try and find some clickbait headlines. Um, we add them to the Padlet, but then I also want you to write them down on a piece of paper and then try and rewrite them to be something that's a more accurate headline for the story. So we're not just assuming what the news article is from the headline, we're then going to go and read story and write a more accurate headline. And if you could put those, share those on the Padlet, which is here, and I'll share, <clears throat> I'll share the link in the chat so that you can access it directly as soon as I stop sharing it. And then in the Zoom chat, we'll present findings to each other and have a chat about it and for Facebook and anybody who's not watching it live it would be great if you could interact in the chat below this Facebook video or on Twitter or straight into the Padlet while it's still open. Okay and so my own our own uh, sorry If you could please give us some feedback, if you've attended the session, if you enjoyed it or if you've not enjoyed it, this is a research project, but we'd love to hear what you've got to say. There's a link below to complete a form and I'll also put that in the chat for people to contribute to. And finally, before we end the Facebook live feed, our own bit of clickbait, you would not believe how thankful we are for your attention. Thanks very much. I'll see you. The next session is next Tuesday morning, 10 o'clock. And I can't remember what we're looking at, but it's more social media goodness. I know it's um, 
privacy, um, being a good digital citizen. Okay, thanks for joining us. See you next week. Bye-bye.